Our next speakers, Kelly Moore and Simon Lewis, they, they are FIFOs, uh, fly in, fly out, uh, on the AP LNG project, I think that's right, the water facilities one. Am I close? <laughs> and they're going to talk us about an initiative that they took uh, at their work site that, that, that was along the same lines. So let's make them feel welcome. Fantastic. All right, well, thanks everybody for taking the time to listen to us. My name's Simon Lewis, and I'll talk you through my journey as to how I got here and why we're actually here. So at the young age of 16, I decided to become a brickies labourer. After about six months, I thought, shit, this is hard. There's got to be an easier way to make money. <laughs> 25 plus years later, it's just as hard to make money because the job in construction hasn't got any easier over the years. It's, uh, it's getting harder and harder and harder every day. I'm now a project director of a major project in Queensland, part of one of the biggest engineering projects in the world at the moment. I've got two camps, two sites 160 kilometres apart, 170 staff, 500 workforce at any point in time. Every one of those guys goes through the same pressures that we're going through every day. The stress levels in the construction industry have probably gone up by hundredfold, I guess, over the last 25 years. It's plagued by delivery, delivery, delivery. We've got to do it faster. We need results quicker. We need to see those results. We've got social media. We've got computers. We've got emails. It's all demanding results. And that sort of, that really, really hard. It's really hard to deal with for everybody. Put, take those people out of the home life, put them in a camp, anything from 2,000 kilometers away to 500 kilometers away from home, jam them in there and work them 12 hours a day. That gives you an idea of the life of a FIFO worker. I've been doing it for 18 years. I think I'm battle hardened. But I'll tell you what, this light's there where I'm definitely not battle hardened. So why are we here? You know, I've sat here today and listened to a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stats out there. I hear there's this many suicides, there's that many people hurting themselves, there's this many people. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter about the numbers. It's the fact that people are. You know, at the end of the day, that's a lot of hurt, a lot of angst. We've heard about what the knock-on effects are. As a construction industry, we all know, and certainly the mates in construction guys know, the average worker doesn't want to open up. You know, you just said, touch someone appropriately. That's very uncommon. <laughs> You know, we go out there to work, we go out there to make cash, we go out there to support our families. But not everybody can handle it all the time. So I guess you can imagine my delight when unilaterally I was stood at work one day when someone came over and said, I'd like to start up a program specifically for this project to bring, make everybody aware of, the, of suicide and, men, and mental health issues. I said, yeah, I'm happy for that. That person was a lady called Kelly Moore who's going to tell you more about this. Kelly's been working for me, or working with me now for a couple of years. She'd never done FIFO before. She's right in the guts of it. And she's taken on the initiative to actually put herself in front of a lot of people and come up with this initiative. The initiative's great. And she's going to talk a bit more about it. But the fact is that Kelly came up with this idea. I've done nothing. I've taken the glory for it. Even got me a safety award. Thank good to that. <laughs> But not only has she taken the initiative, out of those 500 plus workers, pretty much all of those guys have embraced it now. So they do a lot of touching, appropriately. So I'm gonna hand over to Cal now. <laughs> Thanks, Simon. Um, you might just have to bear with me today. I'm not a seasoned public speaker, like a lot of people have, who have been up here today, but um, I'm passionate about it. And I'm gonna stand up here for, to represent all those people on our project who might be struggling with some sort of mental illness. Um, so I want to thank Mates in Construction for inviting us here today as well. Um, so I'm, as Simon said, I'm his personal assistant on our project. Um, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you today what the issues are in FIFO work. I think a lot of you know what those issues are. Um, I will tell you, however, that we are fully aware of many arising issues and also that some of our people will suffer from mental health, to, from mental illness to varying degrees on the life of our project. 
Um, so, ready, so to readily address some of these current and potential issues, we introduced our Mate to Mate campaign. Um, the campaign has been rolled out uh, um, across at both of our sites at Condobri Central and Reedy Creek to more than 500 workers. So we've had some anecdotal evidence and unsolicited feedback that we are moving towards some success and perhaps on the right track with this. Um, we also know that it's a journey, not a destination, so we're constantly monitoring and checking in to see how we're going. So let me introduce mate to mate to you. And I've got lots of notes here too, so I'll be looking at those. <laughs> um, so I've worked in the construction industry for eight years and um, in FIFO for about 18 months. Um, and in that time, I did notice quite a few issues, but I also noticed opportunities that, um, where we could do something about that. So between our two camps, as Simon said, we've got a constant workforce on site of 500 people at any time. And research tells us that one in eight people will suffer from de depression at some stage of their lives and one in five from anxiety. So if those statistics are correct, then we have potentially up to 100 people suffering on our project. Um, so what are some of the issues? So everyone in this room knows that we experience things like depression, anxiety, stress, loneliness and more. And if we take those statistics again and look across this room, there's, there's people in here that are suffering with some of those things too. So now when you add FIFO, while that's financially and personally, personally rewarding, for every credit there's a debit. And what I mean when I say that is that when you work away from loved ones, when you work away from home, issues are really magnified, helplessness sets in and isolation. Um, recently we've also noticed a rise in bullying and harassment claims and perhaps this could all also be a symptom of such things. <laughs> <clears throat> and with social media as well, that's also, I mean, it's not only bullying and harassment in the workplace, it, it goes out into the whole of society as well on Facebook, etc. So what is the Mate to Mate initiative? So it's project based. Um, it's created obviously by myself, so latent contractors, but it's for our project, it's for everyone in our project, it's for all our subcontractors as well. Um, so we're trying to, to um, create a culture of raising mental health awareness and um, that these concerns are as important as treating physical concerns. So we have an ambulance standing by at any point of time for physical ailments. So mate to mate is standing by for mental health first aid. So let me be clear, mate to mate isn't about professional counselling. Um, it's about first aid, mates looking after mates, looking for lead indicators, warning signs. It's about driving communication, building relationships, having conversations, urging our mates to seek help. So it was never designed to be another initiative to be driven by our management team. It's driven by all of us on the project. We've got a responsibility to look after each other. It's our social responsibility to look out for each other. And we as a project also face the same issues the rest of society face in terms of changing attitudes about mental health and the stigma attached. So that's a constant driver for mate to mate. We want, we want our people to know it's not a weakness to put your hand up for help. Um, it's not taboo, and it's a big issue, so we have to deal with it. Um, mate to mate also fits in with latent contractors' values and behaviours. So first of all, we've got safety and health above all else. So we all know how important safety is, um, and um, that it's usually focused on physical, but Research shows that mental health issues affect people's behaviour at work, and we've talked about that today, but there's things like loss of concentration, risk-taking, carelessness, aggression, disengagement. So the potential for harm is greatly increased, and we want our people to go home safely. Now, we also look at our people are the foundation of our success, so it's obvious that a happy workforce produce better results. And so this, this initiative is another way we're looking after our people. <clears throat> so how does it work? 
Um, so we've got a mate-to-mate -mate booklet. So everyone on site gets one of these booklets and they're handed out in pre-starts, at inductions, etc. Um, we've got unique high-vis shirts. We've got hard hat stickers. Um, we've got a monthly focus. We've got pre-start toolbox talks and guest speakers. So we'll look at the booklet first. Um, I wrote this booklet. I'm by no means an expert in the field, but I do have some um, knowledge in the field and I also worked for Lifeline for, well, volunteered at Lifeline for a number of years on the, the suicide helpline. Um, so what I've put in it is statistics on mental health in society and in the construction industry. Um, we've got in there where to get help. So we've got people like Mates in Construction, Lifeline, Beyond Blue, etc. So it talks about what is depression, anxiety, stress and so on. And how can I tell? What are the warning signs? Um, we're not professional counsellors, so there's tips on how do I how do I help my mate? Because not everyone knows how to have that conversation. And how do I listen and have these conversations? Um, and if I know that someone's struggling, how do I check in and monitor them? Um, there's self-help tips on keeping yourself safe and healthy. And there's also suicide guidelines from the Mental Health Foundation of Australia. Um, and our emergency site contacts, if there is an emergency of that type. So in, es in essence, it's a reference tool. It's an information guide for our people. So, um, so we've got the booklet and we wanted, then we wanted visibility. So these are the mate-to-mate -mate shirts in the, on the slide there. And I've got Marty and Tommy there who would be very happy that they're on the slide. <laughs> it's my model. Um, so they're branded Leighton Contractors and APL and G Water Treatment Facilities Project. Um, the shirts meet Australian standards for day and night work. Um, so they're, they're orange and blue, obviously, and the, the blue represents having a blue day, but if your blue day goes on for too long, then we want you to, perhaps it's time for you to put your hand up for help. Uh, on the back of the shirt, it has, it says mate to mate, suicide prevention, uh, mental health awareness and suicide prevention, and it's got the, our employee assistance 1800 number on there for easy accessibility. Um, so who wears it? I went to individual site uh, team pre-starts and I talked more about the campaign and I asked the guys to vote in mate to mate champions. So the criteria for a mate to mate champion is someone who has good communication skills, who's approachable, um, someone who contributed to high team morale <coughs> and generally someone who was a good mate. So those, so the guys um, voted in two of the people who in turn were really, you know, chuffed to, for their mates to feel like that about them. So they basically wear the shirt around the site. So it's, it's just generally a reminder that we've got this campaign. Um, we work on a construction site. The boys are going to make fun of these things as well because it is a hard topic to talk about. So it's known as the hug shirt as well. So if someone's wearing it, <laughs> then you know, come here and give me a hug. But that's okay because they know what the shirt is for and they know what it's about. So the shirt's also proudly worn out in our community with a view to raise further awareness and show people what we're doing as a project and raise awareness in our community as well. So we also have hard hat stickers. So that's the round sticker down the bottom there. So everyone puts that on their hard hat and that's just generally another reminder that we've got the campaign. Um, when I initially rolled it out, I had guest speakers at our major uh, pre-start on a Wednesday morning. So at Condebri Central, we had um, a fellow named Brian Steele who was, who's from Lifeline and he's a men's and rural counsellor. And he came out and talked about mental health and... Um, suicide prevention. And at Reedy Creek, we had um, Amanda Edwards from Mates in Construction. So thanks, Amanda. <laughs> she did the same. Um, we've also got a monthly focus. So that involves putting posters and leaflets up around the camp and the crib sheds. So in December, we had What Are Your Mates Doing This Christmas? So we wanted people to recognise that for some, Christmas is a tough and lonely time. Not everyone has family to go home to. So we wanted everyone to make sure their mate was okay at that time. 
Um, in January, we had we looked at New Year's resolutions, which are usually focused on physical health and eating healthy and exercising and giving up smoking, those sorts of things. But this was about focusing on your um, mental health, your mental well-being. And we also talked about stress and its effects and management tips for stress. Um, and this month, February, we have self-esteem and what does that mean and some self-esteem boosters. Um, so mate to mate, it also focus on, focuses on social events like quiz nights, table tennis, pool, darts, football. We want people to get involved. That's what mate to mate is about. It's about building our community on site. Um, the more we get to know each other, I think the more compassion we'll have for each other. Um, also, a recent newspaper article I read said that it's not only FIFO pay packets that are getting fat, so are our people. So as part of this campaign, we're also looking at encouraging healthy eating, which in turn leads to better me mental health. And we're soon introducing stubby coolers. And whilst Mate to Mate doesn't encourage alcohol abuse, um, it's, it is a culture on the project, on, in the construction industry. These guys work out in the field. It's been a long, hot day. They go and have a beer with each other. And, and that's where conversations happen. So our stubby coolers are another reminder that we've got this campaign. I think we, it's important to fit into to some of the culture that's happening already. Um, and... So we do have some anecdotal evidence well, that our people are talking about these issues on our project. And I have to say that when the, campaign first, when the campaign first came out, I did have a lot of men coming to me and talking to me about the, those issues. So I think, um, you know, it, perhaps it's given them permission. I don't know. But um, if one person comes in, and which they have, and says their mate is struggling, there's something wrong, then perhaps our mate to mate campaign is on the right track. Are we perfect? No. Are we trying? Yes, we are. So being here today, my hope is to learn from you people in the audience um, and take back what I can to our workforce as part of the campaign. Um, and I've already learned things here today to help us move forward with that. So I look forward to catching up with, with everyone afterwards and if there's any information that you can share that I could take back because our people don't always have access to um, the internet to go onto websites, etc. So posters, leaflets, anything that I can take back to help them. Thank you. <laughs>